Good morning, everyone. This is the Office of Consumer Credit Commissioner's stakeholder meeting to discuss the rule review for debt management providers. My name is Matt Nance, and I'm the OCCC's Deputy General Counsel. I'm joined by several members of the OCCC staff, including Commissioner Leslie Pettyjohn, Director of Consumer Protection, Huffman Lewis, Licensing Team Lead, Kenesha Daniels, Supervising Examiner, Carl Hubenthal, Assistant General Counsel, Audrey Spaulding, and Senior Paralegal, Ginger Harmon, who's acting as our meeting organizer. We're holding this meeting through an online webinar, and I want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, getting input from stakeholders is a really important part of our rulemaking process, and these meetings help us ensure we produce the best rules possible. Our webinar platform is GoToWebinar. Uh, some of you might be listening on your phones, some may be watching on your computers, and some may be doing both. For those watching on your computer, there's a window where you can submit questions. And if you have technical questions about using the webinar, you can type them in and Ginger will try to answer those. We're discussing a pre-comment draft of rule amendments that's available on the OCCC's webpage for recent and upcoming rules. On that webpage, you can see the draft rules by clicking the link for debt management rule review. If you have any comments on the rule amendments, go ahead and type those in at any time and I'll be getting to those. And if you're on a computer with a mic, there's a function allowing you to raise your hand and then we can let you make a comment verbally. We're talking about rule amendments that come out of a process called rule review. The Texas government code requires state agencies to review their rules every four years to make sure they should still exist and make any necessary updates. And when we do that, we try to get input from stakeholders on whether the rules should be updated. The rules governing debt management providers in Title VII, Chapter 88 of the Texas Administrative Code are currently up for review. So I'd like to first summarize these rule amendments and then lay out the proposed timeline for the amendments, uh, and then everyone will have a chance to provide comments. There are four different sections with proposed rule changes coming out of rule review. In Section 88.104, we add language explaining that registrants must provide certain updated contact information, such as the business name or names of principal parties within 30 days after any change occurs. Uh, this change works together with the change to section 88202 that I'll discuss in just a moment, where we'd remove the requirement to provide a list of principal parties to the OCCC every year upon renewal. We're hoping this will simplify the process for registrants to notify the OCCC of changes. In section 88.110, the changes relate to our review of a license applicant's criminal history. Uh, the amendments include some technical corrections and updates to citations based on some legislation from 2019. In section 88.202, we're trying to clarify and simplify the requirements for annual reports. Uh, several parts of the debt management annual report are required by the statute at chapter 394 of the Texas Finance Code. And we wanted to update the rule to clearly refer to each of these statutory requirements. Also, we'd replace the current requirement to annually provide a list of owners and principal parties with the requirement to annually certify contact and principal party information. Again, the idea is to simplify the process. So instead of having to provide a separate document listing principal parties every year, a registrant could just keep the OCCC updated when there's a change. We've also been looking at possible modifications relating to credit counselors and accreditation organizations. Uh, currently, our rules at 88202 and 88304 require registrants to send documentation on credit counseling and accreditation with the annual report. And although this issue doesn't appear in this particular rule draft, we are looking at ways that some of those requirements could be simplified or streamlined. And if stakeholders have any comments on that issue, we'd invite that input. So that's 88202. Uh, we also have some amendments to section 88306 explaining that maximum debt management fees are described by section 394.210 of the finance code and that a provider may not impose unauthorized fees. Regarding the fee limitations, we thought it might be helpful to have an advisory bulletin summarizing those limitations since the limitations are located in a couple different places and require providers to do some analysis to make sure they're in compliance. Uh, that's why we published an advisory bulletin on the issue earlier this month, on the same day we published this rule draft. And a copy of that bulletin is attached to our meeting notice and rule draft. Uh, we do urge providers to review applicable laws to make sure they're in compliance, but this bulletin will hopefully provide some initial guidance and we welcome any comments that stakeholders have on that bulletin. 
Here's a proposed timeline for the rule amendments. Uh, you can see we're requesting initial informal pre-comments by December 1st. We intend to propose the amendments at the Finance Commission's December 17th meeting. There will be an official comment period during the month of January 2022. We would present the rules for adoption at the Finance Commission's February 2022 meeting, and the rules would be effective in early March. This is, of course, a tentative timeline and is subject to the Finance Commission's approval of the rules. So with that, I have summarized the rule action and I'll open things up to comments on the rule amendments. Uh, again, there are two ways to provide your feedback through this webinar. Uh, first, you can type your comment out and send it to us through the webinar's question feature. Or if you're on a computer with a mic, uh, there should be a function allowing you to raise your hand. So Ginger, do we have any written questions or comments through the webinar? Okay, I'm not showing any questions or hand raises at the moment. Um, I do wanna make sure we've had an opportunity for anyone to uh, raise your hand. So I will wait a little bit longer. Um, remember, if, if you need to type out a longer question and want to type a short message saying that you're typing out a longer question, uh, go ahead and feel free to send a short message so that we know to uh, wait on that question. So I'll wait. Uh, about 30 more seconds to see if we have any questions or hand raises. Okay, it looks like we don't have any questions or raised hands. Um, so again, there will be an opportunity to provide informal pre-comments on this draft through December 1st. Uh, I wanna thank everyone who has joined us or listened in. Uh, rule updates are available on our website and we'll also be posting the audio of this meeting. So it's available for folks to listen to later. Uh, we will accept written pre-comments on these rules until 5 p.m. on Wednesday, December 1st. Please email those to me at rule.comments at occ.texas.gov, which is our email address for rule comments. Uh, thank you all for listening in. Please be safe out there, and we will see you next time. Thank you.